Hi, I'm Eric Lenask. Welcome to this edition of the TMC Newsroom on the Road. We're here uh, in Dallas, Texas, and I'm talking with Nortel Sita Lohman. Sita, thanks for joining me. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so <laughs> I, I guess the question that uh, most people out there are going to want to want to uh, wondering what the answer to is what's going on uh, with regards to uh, your divestiture sure so i am in the carrier voip and application solutions business at nortel which mm -hmm. is the wireline um, voip business um, we announced about a month ago that um, we will be transitioning over to Gemban. they are the acquirer of the business mm -hmm. and we are actively in the middle of our divestiture planning transition planning integration planning and sometime in the second quarter um, that transition will close um, just this week, actually, the GSM business um, from Nortel has closed to both Capsh and Ericsson. Mm -hmm. The North American assets went to Ericsson and the European assets went to Capsh. So that business has now been divested as well. So this carrier Voigt business is actually the last major business left to be divested. But sometime in Q2, that, that will close. So in the, in the meantime, uh, what have you guys been up to on the carrier side? Uh, obviously, that's um, at least around <coughs> the media side. That's, that's been sort of a distraction. Um, but obviously, you know, business goes sure. on. No, business goes on. Um, to be honest, we had a fantastic year last year. Um, if you look at all the major analyst reports out there, we retained our number one position in North America. We grew our share about eight to nine points. Um, and so, you know, in, 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 a, in a tough economy and kind of an odd situation for the company, we went through some really great changes and, and came out still, again, the, the leader in care of VoIP. And then one of the other things we're working on is the, um, our large enterprise hosted solution. I'm not sure how much time we spent on that last time, but um, we were at VoiceCon a couple weeks mm -hmm. ago, um, and we talked about really the strength and the, the ability that we have on our carrier hosted side. And we talked about um, British Telecom, one of our leading customers of that solution. And we had nice demos that showed kind of the high end um, solution that we have for the large enterprise. So, you know, a lot of still activity going on. Where does the interest uh, uh, from, the, from the large enterprise side come in hosted? Uh, you know, it was always, uh, you know, hosted was for smaller businesses. Mm -hmm. um, but lately, you know, there's been a lot of talk around uh, sure. enterprise hosted. I think there's probably three things. One is, um, you know, a lot of PBXs are becoming old. And so as enterprises look to move to IP PBXs, they're starting to ask the question, okay, well, what's the difference between now an IP PBX and a hosted solution? They're both IP. One's way more mm -hmm. economical from the CapEx side. And even on the operational side, it's going to be cheaper for them. Um, the second is the whole Centrix market. As they start looking from moving to TDM to IP, there's a, you know, a natural transgression for them to move. And then I think the third is just the whole cloud computing thing that's going on out there. And you know, a lot of operators are looking at hosted voice and hosted services as a cloud computing um, capability. And the advantage that that as well can bring to the large enterprise. And I think as well as you start looking at some of these high-end deployments, security concerns, um, you know, geo survivability, high-end business features, all of these things can be delivered in a high-end um, solution for a hosted that probably in the future or in the past could only be done with a PBX offer. So I think competitively from a feature side, it, it's come a long way as well. And, and I guess uh, the, the other realization is that, uh, you know, along those same lines, uh, the quality is there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's, it, there's no degradation of quality when you're talking about uh, cloud-based offering. I mean, if you look at the BT solution that we have today, um, and there it's deployed in one of the largest um, government agencies that they've got. We're seeing three million calls a day, and this network is huge. It's, it's across 1,100, I think, um, sites. There's about 20,000 call center, um, you know, facilities out there. So it's a very large, very secure network that's you know up and running. Mm -hmm. Now I know that uh, I guess uh, in about a month or so, a little more than a month, you guys are also going to be. Uh, out at the cable show mm -hmm. out in L.A. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you guys doing in that space? Uh, similar but different stuff. I mean, certainly the whole move to IP is a big mm -hmm. thing. The cable guys are very focused more on the smaller end, as you mentioned, so the, the hosted SMB space. And so some of the same things that we're doing for the large enterprise um, are things that we're delivering to the SMB. We've got a portfolio of um, end devices that we've bundled with our soft switch from uh, removable, removable um, gateways. Um, SIP phones, you know, things that you could actually bundle and sell to an SMB. Um, and then on the consumer side, obviously, there's, you know, just new clients and things that we're working on. There's some new advanced web services, integration with the TV. So there's quite a few things that we're doing on the consumer side as well for the cable guys. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're talking about the SMB market, how, how does your stuff compare with some of the other products that are out there, uh, you know, particularly uh, cost-wise? 
I mean, I think from a hosted solution perspective, you know, our, our soft switch has all the advanced features and, and all that as, as everybody else's. Mm -hmm. I think where the economics comes in it is that it's fully tested end to end with some of these NCPE devices, which is what the SMB needs, right? And again, just from the moves, ads, and changes, having that fully integrated system that they can get from an enterprise or from a, um, a carrier it certainly gives them a lot of advantage. What re regarding the SMB product, uh, what what is uh, the optimal size company? Is there one, uh, or, or does it really range from depend on how you want to define SMB? Yeah. I mean, we define SMB as up to 250 seats, mm -hmm. but you know, I think it can be any number as well. I mean, I we've seen economics just on any range there in terms of what would work for the different markets. What's what's the difference uh, in terms of uh, requirements or how to, uh, providing service to? whatever the top end of the SMB is, and then making the jump to enterprise. I think that's when you start getting into things like the security, the geo survivability, um, being able to have, you know, not only a portal that each end user could go in and add changes, you know, to it, but then you might have an admin for the 250 within the SMB. And so you have now different levels of administration that you'd have to add on to it. And then obviously when you get into large enterprise, you know, then there's even more levels of administration that you want to add. And then the difference between one of the things we're looking at in the, um, the enterprise is just maybe a PBX may still be the right thing for a central office, but hosted may make more sense for the 10 branches. And so being able to provide this hosted or this hybrid offer um, so you can have the same IP services across either whether it's trunking to the, the PBX or whether it's hosted services directly into those branch offices. And again, having the same set of services across all of those. So how do you provide that, the, the hybrid model that you're talking about where you've got an on-prem uh, uh, you know, at the, at the main, mm -hmm. he main headquarters and then uh, do hosted to the, uh, to the branches? Well, as a carrier, they would just do hosted directly to the branch and they would do a SIP trunk into the enterprise, right? And the other thing that's unique about our solution is not only can they do a hybrid that way, but they can have hybrid in terms of the kind of phones that they would support. So let's say you're an enterprise and you want to move to IP, but you don't want to flash cut on day one. You want to have a very slow migration. You've got some old analog phones and you may have, you know, new ones. And so this would allow you to be able to, off, again, off that same hosted service, support, you know, old analog phones as well as SIP phones with the same set of services because our solution can support both the TDM, PSTN services simultaneously as when they're supporting the more advanced SIP services. What are you seeing in terms of uh, the overall VoIP market? Uh, uh, are we continuing to see uh, growth? Are we going to continue to see growth? How quickly are we going to see it? Oh, how quickly? I don't know. I, I read the same analyst reports as you, and, and I think I Fair saw enough. one the other day that said 2014 would be at 50%. And I was like, oh, my God, that's so long. Um, you know, I think part of that is mobile VoIP as well, right? With sure. LTE coming on board, certainly WiMAX being here, the more you can deploy VoIP over those various broadband access technologies on the wireless side, it's going to help to spur the growth as well. Um, and that's another thing. We didn't talk much about CTI, but we right. um, had a couple of announcements around that as well, really talking about our 4G mobile VoIP solution, where, again, the same set of application servers that we sell on the broadband side, you can sell that same solution into a wireless broadband and not only have VoIP, but also have voice call continuity. So let's say you're an end user and you're on a WiMAX network and you're within a you know coffee shop and you're on your mobile phone on Wi-Fi and then you walk outside and you get onto cellular and then all of a sudden you're, you know, ported over into WiMAX and you can have voice call continuity across all those technologies. Um, so we have one of the first deployments of that VCC across 4G and we'll be certainly, you know, moving that into the LTE as that becomes, you know, mainstream as well. So I think part of it as well is just looking at how do you have all these advanced residential and business features for all these access technologies, whether it's cable, whether it's DSL, 4G and really, you know, bringing the advantages of all those into one solution. So it's certainly been plenty of uh, discussion and, and debate over mobile, mobile VoIP and, and who's going who's gonna, to uh, allow it and deliver it, and we don't want to or we do want to. At the end of the day, you can't avoid it. It's going to exactly. happen. No, I, I think it, it can happen and does happen today. I mean, if, if you're out there buying the Clearwire WiMAX service and you stick it in your laptop, have a VoIP client, you know, all of a sudden you're doing mobile VoIP, right? So nobody's restricting that, nobody's monitoring that, so. No question about that. Mm -hmm. We've been talking here uh, in this edition of the TMC Newsroom on the Road with Nortel's Sita Lohman. Sita, thanks for joining me. Absolutely. Thanks.